Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Saul Kaiserman. I'm the Director of Lifelong Learning for Congregation Emanuel of the City of New York. I'm so glad to have you here with us this evening for our very first ever online religious school town hall. Um, those of you who have your screens turned on, I want to tell you what a joy it is for me to be able to see your faces right now. It's been a really long while and we haven't had any uh, events together and, and I frankly miss you. Uh, I'm going to turn over to Rabbi Joshua Davidson um, to offer a few words of welcome, and then um, we'll, 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 we'll come back together for the, for the agenda for the meeting. Thank you, Saul, and thank you, everyone. There's something I'd like to offer. <laughs> Tomorrow night, we begin the Hebrew month of Elul with its daily sounding of the shofar. And of course, it brings us to the threshold of a new year on Rosh Hashanah. Together, we look out across that threshold into the new year, not knowing for certain what it holds. But we do know that there's a place to which we can turn and a tradition to which we can turn for hope and for strength in moments of uncertainty. And that's the Jewish community and our Jewish tradition. Just as he did last year, last spring, Saul Kaiserman, together with his wonderful core of teachers and staff and lay partners, so this fall has created an exciting way for us to begin the year. And I do believe that in the coming months, we will be together physically again. But until that moment, we will be together spiritually, welcoming in what we pray will be a year of health and happiness and peace for all of us. And I look forward to seeing all of you very, very soon. And I'm very grateful that you've chosen to remain part of this temple community and this wonderful religious school. So Saul, thank you for all that you do to lead us and I'm happy to turn it back to you now. Thank you, Rabbi. Um, so to begin, I'd like to um, have uh, my phenomenal team introduce themselves. You know me, Saul Kaiserman, Director of Lifelong Learning for the Synagogue. I'm going into, I believe, my 14th year here, and I have two kids in the program. Jory, who is a seventh grader and just became a bat mitzvah over Zoom this past summer, and my younger daughter, Ziva, is a fifth grader this year. Hi, I am Rachel Brumberg, the Associate Director of Lifelong Learning. I have been here as long as Saul, minus one month. Um, and this year I will be working predominantly with the teen community. So I have, um, I guess, gotten older. I get to be a teen this year, but look forward to still working with the religious school and the overlap between the two communities. Hi everyone, I'm Jackie Schreiber. Um, I'm also an associate director of lifelong learning um, for pre-K through eighth grade. And this is my fifth year at Emmanuel and I'm so excited to see you all and to be back for another great year. Hi, I'm Sam Fox Harden. I'm the administrative assistant in the Department of Lifelong Learning. I've been here, I think about two months less than Jackie. That sounds right. Um, and uh, typically I'm interfacing with faculty and staff um, uh, as well as emailing everybody, but I now I'm running a lot of the technical back end, which is why it looks like I'm looking at two places in the same time. Uh, but I think that's enough for me. Uh, Saul, I think we're going back to you. Now. Thanks, Sam. Uh, so I'm going to share a screen now, um, and this is because we've or we we asked all of you to um, kind of address your questions to us ahead of time, and so to um, jump straight into answering the biggest question that people had, yes. There will be a virtual option for religious school every week that there is religious school throughout the whole year. So if the reason that you signed on was to find out the answer to that question, you can now sign off and you don't need to stick around for the rest of our agenda. Um, but I hope you will because over the next 30 minutes, uh, I'm gonna go into more detail about how we arrived at our plans for next year. What were the different considerations that we took into account? Um, what our plans are both for virtual and for the possibility of on-site learning this coming year. And I'm gonna outline what we're gonna be doing in terms of the school schedule and curriculum. We're gonna hear a little bit about the B'nai Mitzvah program here and then there'll be time for more questions 
questions and answers. If as we go along, you have questions about what I'm speaking about, please just go ahead and put them right into the chat box. And then in about a half an hour, we'll respond to any of those questions that we haven't already covered following um, my presentation. Um, so I'm gonna kick it off, let me see. Okay, so what are some of the considerations that we had in mind in, in putting together our plans for this year? Um, as you know, this past spring, we had to very suddenly and really without any preparation make a transition from a fully in-person program to a fully online program. Um, we learned a lot from our experience, which I would describe as thrilling and nail-biting, and uh, we're proud of what we were able to accomplish this past spring. Um, but we also spent the summer thinking about how we can do even better, how we can take advantage of the technology that we're using, how we can respond to this particular moment in time, which brings all sorts of different kinds of questions about how should Judaism play a role in our lives and in our thinking than we might otherwise have, um, and how we can learn from the experiences of other congregations and of other programs um, in thinking about the program that we're trying to create. Um, I want to first mention that some of the considerations we had in mind had to do with all of you and the different needs that our congregants are bringing to the, the school. Um, our families represent over 25 different schools, both public and private. Each school has a different approach to the coming year. Sometimes each school has multiple approaches to the coming year that range from fully in-person programs to hybrid models to fully online programs. And sometimes the schools haven't actually decided yet what they're going to be doing for the coming year and are still in the process of figuring that out. And as we all know, they may still change their minds between now and the start of September. Um, and then on top of that, we have families that have already let us know that they're out of town for some part of the coming year, maybe for a few months, maybe for the entirety of the coming year. Maybe they're still waiting to find out what's happening in their school situation. And we wanna make sure that we have a program that's gonna work for everybody, including those Emmanuel families who aren't physically in New York City this coming year. Um, I also want to speak to the concerns that having COVID in our midst brings to the table. It requires extensive precautions for online learning, um, which I'll go into a little bit more detail about later. Um, and it also requires a flexibility in our approach because we just don't know what kind of state and local guidelines may change whatever plans we put in place over the course of the coming months. There may be, there may be ways that we put a plan in place and then because of the way that guidelines change, different, different opp opportunities or options are what are required for the moment. We also know that on an individual level, the schools are going to have and the kids are going to have very different situations. Um, it may be that a child who was very comfortable coming in person one week is no longer comfortable coming in person the following week. It may be that a child who was able to attend in person one week is no longer able to attend in person the following week and we need to have a program that's responsive to that concern as well. Again, I want to, for those of you who just joined, reiterate that we are going to have an online option throughout the entire year, every week of the program. Um, and, and I'm going to talk more about that in just a minute. But the main thing that I, I also want to say is that we have a very particular approach to learning here at Temple Emanuel that all of you, I think, have come to love. If you've seen any of our programs at any level, um, we, we see relationships as being the cornerstone to our program. And we need to think about in the environment that we're in right now, how can we take advantage of the outstanding faculty that we have and help them to continue to develop relationships with our students? What can we do to help build relationships between students who maybe remember each other from nursery school, who are friends with kids who go to other school, who are here because they go to an all boys or an all girls school and are looking to meet you know, some, some new faces? Um, how can we have seventh graders and eighth graders that wanna keep coming back because they wanna see the kids that they've met in religious school before? And so thinking about those relationships is key to our plans for next year. And also we have a very particular approach to how education should look. We think that it's not just important to mix the kids up with one another and build relationships, but they be engaged in real meaningful, uh, relevant hands-on activities that are infused with joy and excitement. And we wanna make sure that whatever we're doing, whether it's in person with the various constraints that on-site learning brings into play, or whether it's at home, 
with the constraints that our home learning brings in, that we're taking advantage also of what the opportunities are. Now we want to be mindful that at this point in the year, there are certain activities that we are clear are not possible for us to be doing in person at all that have been part of our religious school curriculum. So for example, cooking is not something that we foresee being able to do on site at any point in the coming few months, possibly for longer than the next few months, and yet we've been able to have some success in doing those sorts of programs at home. And I also finally want to mention as a consideration that we have some faculty that were outstanding in-person teachers and that it was very challenging for them to adapt their approach to teaching to an online format. And so one of the things that we need to be thinking about as we're putting together our plans for the coming year is how do we help those teachers do their best work and what kinds of curricular supports do our teachers need in order to be able to do their best work. Okay, with that as a backdrop, let me say that we have spent the past few months in careful consultation. First of all, the synagogue has hired an epidemiologist for UJ Federation as a consultant, Dr. Isaac Weisfuse, and together with um, Kara Glickman, who is our executive director, or our vice president of administration and planning, we've had careful conversations to think about what is in fact plausible for us to do in person and in what ways can people get together in person. He's been advising the congregation on all of its approach. Um, we've consulted with the Rabbi Davidson and the rest of the clergy team. We've thought about what the space in the building can do and also what we can do operationally through technology with our operations team. We've consulted with our teachers as well and asked them to think about what are the ways that they would most want to be a part of the program in the coming year. I've been reaching out to my colleagues at other congregations. In particular, I've been in weekly contact with my colleagues here in the New York City area, particularly Manhattan and Brooklyn, but also colleagues nationally. And I'll tell you a little bit more about one of the ways in, in a short while. And finally, we've been in touch with many of you, both through the Parent Association as a representative body, which is being led this year by Luis Santa Cruz, and Abby Elbaum as our representative on the Board of Trustees of the congregation, um, but also with many of you who've raised questions and concerns over the course of the summer or offered suggestions and guidance over the course of the summer. So with all of this in mind, let me now share with you a little bit about what we have planned for the coming year. To begin, uh, by the way, um, Jackie is going to put into the chat box a link that gives you a more detailed calendar for the coming year. Um, which you can, if you want to, you can look at on your own. It's um, got all of the schedules of school breaks and everything like that. And a lot of this is still a, a work in progress, um, but the calendar is pretty set. So the way that the year is going to look is we're gonna start the year with a three session, what I'm calling a mini master, and then follow it with a series of trimesters over the course of the rest of the year. That will be more of the weekly religious school program. Our opening mini master will be conducted entirely online in order to enable the kind of special holiday programming that we've all come to love in the opening weeks of school, including things like school-wide assemblies and singing together with Cantor Glassman and the other things that really characterize how we launch the program. Um, there will be small breakout groups for building relationships, but it'll be very oriented towards activities around the holidays and interfacing with our high holiday family um, and teen worship so that materials that we're creating during religious school will reflect on activities that we're engaging in during those worship services. Um, one other thing that we're excited about about this mini mester is that we're going to be able to open it up to people who have not yet registered for the religious school. So there will be the opportunity for members of the congregation to participate in our Zoom experience in person and for people who maybe have not yet become part of our community to experience components of these first three weeks online on Facebook and via the live stream so that we can reach out to people who maybe are in a community where they don't have an option for religious school this coming year or for Jewish education for the coming year and help them to know that we can be in a virtual way, a place that's a home for them, just like we're home for those who are part of our manual community already. Weekly religious school program will be beginning on October 18th. There will be online religious school every week that school is in session throughout the year. 
and we will also provide on-site learning, assuming we are able to under the restrictions that are in place at the time for any student who's unable to effectively participate virtually. Families will still be able to alternate between Sunday and Monday classes. With, if they're participating online, they can do that just like they used to do it in person. If families choose to stay remote, you can continue to com be remote even if we ultimately open up in person over the course of the year in a more robust way. And even if you are attending in person, you will always be able to switch to remote learning at any time. Now, the reason that we've broken the year up into these trimesters is so that in November, we can evaluate, can we open up more fully for more on-site learning from January through March? If we can, I hope we can, I'd love to say we can, then the winter trimester may be a little bit more open. Um, if we see that it's not realistic, then we can evaluate again in February for our final spring trimester in April, May. Beginning next week, we are going to be contacting all the families that are already registered for religious school to understand your preferences for virtual and on-site learning and how we can make the program work for you. But I'm going to spend about the next 10 or 15 minutes describing what the programs look like in greater detail to help you to make that decision and think about what is the right choice for your family. Um, we're obviously going to be responsive to developing circumstances with a robust, flexible approach. And for those who are going to be learning on site, we will have a strong plan in place to respond to the unique health concerns of the coming year. However, I want to make clear right from the outset that there are some activities that will require students on site to be on screen, even if they're in person in the synagogue, because of the kinds of restrictions that are in place. And I'm sure you've heard this already um, from your kids in terms of their, their regular schooling. Um, so we do anticipate the large majority of our students are going to be participating virtually at least through December and possibly for the entire year. And we're prepared for that and to, to run a program that is largely centered around online learning. So let me show you what the school week is going to look like a little bit more clearly. So first of all, I want to say that our goal with online learning is to provide opportunities that we might not otherwise have in a classroom where kids can meet kids who are from other parts of the country potentially, have excellent teachers and excellent programming that we might not be able to offer in person through people who don't aren't local to New York City. We're really looking at it as an opportunity uh, to introduce our children to kind of like the wide world of Jewish life, to Jewish diversity, um, and uh, I, I feel, I want to say honestly, a little bit of the excitement in this year that I had when I first arrived at Emmanuel 14 years ago. When I came to the synagogue, I was asked to kind of re-envision what an education program could look like for the congregation because there was a recognition that what had been happening up until that point had stopped working. And now for reasons that really don't have anything to do with our faculty or our curriculum or our love for the students, what we were doing, also we have to rethink and we have to try a different approach. And so I want to say there's the excitement of working together with all of you to figure out like what new possibilities are being opened up in the coming year. Um, and I also want to say that, you know, depending on what we can do safely and within the guidelines of the synagogue and, you know, local and, and federal mandates, uh, we will continue to have in-person events as possible. And there are things that we're working on right now that I hope will come to fruition, but it's just impossible for us to say. So the school year is going to be divided into three separate components over the course of a typical week. Um, during school hours, there'll be virtual learning and on-site learning if we can do it on Sundays from 9.30 to noon and Mondays from 4 to 6. We will not be filling that entire time slot with learning online because it's just too much time to spend online. Um, it'll consist both of experts who are presenting kind of the content side of it and also what we're calling counselors or relationship specialists or engagement maestros that are going to be the ones who will be really like kind of the concierges for your child and your family's participation in the program, making sure that they're always 
feeling a sense that there's someone here who's thinking about them as an individual and who's helping to build their relationships with the other students. I'll go into a little bit more detail on the next slide about what the during school hours approach is going to be, but there will be two other components to the program. So the first is what we're calling asynchronous outside of school learning. That's going to consist of activity boxes and challenges that students can do independently or you can do them as a family on your own schedule. This is not just going to be like busy work and homework. This will be for those students who are looking for something that isn't in front of a screen as a way to engage with Jewish learning. They'll be able to do this on their own time. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes as well. Finally, the third piece of our program for third through sixth graders will be Hebrew. We had already been offering tutoring via Skype one-on-one -on -one for any student who wanted it for years. And so it was an easy transition for us to make to go to an all virtual Hebrew program last year. And we're going to continue to build that approach as the third component of the program for our third through sixth graders. I know I'm talking kind of quickly, and nonstop, and I really appreciate your willingness to let me present in this kind of frontal way. Um, I really wanna just share all of these ideas with you all now, and then I promise that we'll have more of a back and forth once um, we're, we, we, we get to uh, the details of the program. Okay, so what does the daily schedule during school hours look like? This is where it's going to be a, a normal kind of drop-off program, but like it's okay for parents and siblings to participate as well, if that's what you want, grandparents, um, nannies, but like just like you would do in person, um, it'll be a program that's targeted to the student as the primary learner. Um, this is gonna be a place both for new learning and relationship building to take place and also for students to share some of what they've been doing over the course of the week, either through activity boxes or through their one-on-one -on -one Hebrew programs. Um, Explorers will be a monthly family-oriented program, much of which will have to be conducted online. So we did our matzo making online last year for Explorers and the pre-K through second grade families. and. Frankly, afterwards, I think many of the people who were there said that this was their favorite session of religious school that they'd ever been to. So I feel comfortable with that. In school, during school hours, there'll be grade-wide and school-wide content-driven activities, Hebrew word of the day, um, holiday-related programming, activities that we're doing as a large community. But then we'll also break into smaller groups, primarily by grades, for community and relationship building, icebreakers, making meaning out of what we've been doing in the large group and doing content that's particularly appropriate for individual grades. Um, music for pre-K through second grades and tefillah or worship for third through sixth grades will be happening during re religious school hours. Um, and we've had great success with putting kids in the spotlight during music so they can see each other dancing. And also the kids will be taking much more of a leadership role in tefillah this year, where we'll be giving them a chance to sign up to lead individual prayers any week that they can be practicing together with their, in their Hebrew classes so that um, it's always a community that's leading us in worship. And finally, Tribes has been really one of our spectacular programs on Sundays, led by our teens um, every week. And I, one of the weird, lit, weird benefits of like the, this online situation is we've always wanted to bring Tribes to the Monday program, but we've never been able to do it because of the time constraints and because our teens just weren't available on Monday afternoons. But I'm very excited that it seems that we are going to be able to bring tribes to our Monday students this year. So for those of you who are typically Monday families, this is where third, fourth, and fifth graders are mixed into smaller groups that um, develop kind of their own identity as a, as a tribe that's led by the teens and where the teachers take a, a back seat in the program. And we see this as one of the most exciting pieces of our entire curriculum. And I'm I'm kind of excited that we're going to be able to bring this to our Monday students, but up until now, only the Sunday students have been able to do this. The second piece of the curriculum, oh, I'm sorry, Jackie, maybe before I go on to this, would you say a word about um, just how we're going to continue to help the teachers to, to maintain student interest and focus and what kind of strategies they're going to use? 
Sure. So, um, you know, as Saul has been, it has been saying, we, um, we're, we're planning a lot of things. I think that that's what we know keeps kids interested. We're keeping all of our class time to a shorter uh, time and we are um, doing a lot of things within those hours. So between things like tribes, um, the, and the curriculum that we're going to be using that's focusing on our health and mental health um, that we have been researching that I believe Saul's gonna talk a little bit more about. Um, we think that the kids are going to be really engaged. They're gonna be able to see each other. That's what makes them excited. Building the community and coming together um, our teachers are prepared to use tons of different themes, taking advantage of technology and the fact that we have the ability to do so many um, things that we wouldn't necessarily do in the classroom. Um, and we're lucky that we had time to experiment with this in the spring and a little bit over the summer um, so that we really know what, what worked and what didn't work. Um, but we're planning on it being a ton of fun. Um, you know, Saul's envisioning a, a TV game show basically for some of our sessions. Um, and I think that the kids are really going to enjoy it. They're gonna be looking forward to seeing their teachers, their friends, the different characters that are coming out, um, you know, between using different storytelling and different different Hebrew words of the day and things like that. So um, we know that things need to be changed up frequently. Um, that's on our minds and I think additionally, um, having Hebrew one-on-one -on -one or in small groups for people is an additional um, element of our program that's really going to give kids what they need and can meet them exactly where they're at. Thank you, Jackie. Um, one thing I just want to add at this point is that our seventh and eighth grade program will be virtual throughout the entire year. It won't be on site at all, at least unless uh, circumstances change dramatically in New York City, and that's both because of the large number of students that we already have enrolled in the seventh and eighth grade and our desire to enable them to really build community in that program, and also because the nature of the curriculum really lends itself well to a virtual program, and we're excited to be able to do that with our seventh and eighth grade. It's going to be taught by Rabbi Andy Kahn, and we're very excited for him to be playing that role for the program as well. Okay, I'll tell you a little bit more just in brief about these activity boxes and weekly challenges. So this summer I was part of a small think tank of educators nationally to support the development of a program that spoke to the times that we're living in. And um, to say frankly that there are challenges that our students are facing in terms of um, confidence, mental health, um, how they're approaching the world that I think we all have a little bit of um, an anxiety as parents about, uh, you know, what, what does it mean to, to, to live through a, a period like we're in? So we have developed a program um, that's called To Your Health that is built around challenges and activities that students can do on their own at home. Um, they can do it together with the, a family member or they can do it independently. They can do it together with our faculty from Emmanuel or they can do it on their own schedule. Um, we will be sending home in the fall boxes of supplies and projects and there'll be unboxing videos so that the kids can have the excitement of seeing what's inside of it. The challenges will include things like posting videos of themselves to private websites to playing duolingo for challenges to see who can like be the strongest in hebrew um, to kahoot uh, quizzes that they can take over the course of the coming week um, things like creating virtual coloring pages that younger kids can use as their backgrounds um, or that we can all use when we're watching high holiday services together um, on zoom so we can see one another in a different way some of the materials we're going to send home, some will be things that you'll download off of the website. Some will be recycled materials because I think we're all a little concerned about the clutter that's starting to come into our lives at this point and wanting to be able to reuse some of the things that we already have around the house. Um, each family will be assigned a member of our faculty who will be your regular contact to help guide you through these programs. And let me also say that like everything we've ever done, this is not an obligation. This is like everything, it's, it's optional. If this doesn't work for your family, you won't do activity boxes and challenges, or if it works for you to do it sometimes, but not other times, that, that's okay too. 
Kendra Glassman, I have about two more slides that'll take about five more minutes and then I'll turn it over to you, okay? Thank you so much for your patience. Um, you know, it's not like I've been able to practice running a town hall about reopening a religious school in the time of COVID before this. Uh, I'm enjoying so this, so take your time. Take your time. <laughs> Thank you, Kander. Uh Our one-on-one -on -one and small group Hebrew learning program is going to be virtual. Um, that will be happening on your own schedule during the course of the year. If you already were participating in this as a family last year, then we are in the process of hiring the teachers right now. And as soon as they are ready, we're ready to commence learning with you. So if you wanna be doing it right in the start of September, we'll be able to start Hebrew right then. But Hebrew for all students in grades three through six will commence the week of October 18th when our regular religious school weekly program begins. I also wanna say that while we're excited to do it one-on-one -on -one and we feel very comfortable with that, it may be that your child would prefer to do their Hebrew together with another kid who they um, would love to see every week in a small group or maybe two or three kids. And and we will make that work as well. So we will be reaching out to all of you over the course of the next six weeks to find out what your preferences are for Hebrew learning and to set you up with a teacher on a, at a schedule and time that works for your family for Hebrew learning. Um, there'll be one unified curriculum for all the students in grades three through six, but we understand that kids may move through that curriculum now at their own pace in a way that was always more challenging to do in a classroom setting, in a once a week program. And so we believe that there's going to be great opportunities that are going to be enabled through this particular approach. Um, I also want to mention that outside of school hours, we'll continue to have Shabbat and holiday programming. We had weekly Shabbat with the Shabbat dinosaur with Rabbi Ehrlich and myself last spring. Uh, we had Shabbat on demand where we were screening the best of the Jewish videos we found on the internet for half an hour uh, each week. We had weekly uh, Kabbalah Shabbat candle lighting led with the Parent Association. And those are all things that we are going to, if you want to come to those things, we're going to have those things for you every week throughout the, the year so that we can continue to to see each other in much in the way we're seeing each other right now and, and feeling that sense of togetherness. Uh, hang on a second. Yes. Okay, so now the third piece of the program is, is the in-person on-site learning. And I want to tell you just a little bit about the safety protocols and adjustments that we've been making. And um, Kara Glickman is also on the call so that if you have additional questions, um, she'll be able to answer anything that, that I'm not clear on myself because we're really, um, as we're in the process of opening up the synagogue a little bit more than it had been previously, many of these things are still in flux. But a few of the things that I'd like to tell you, first of all, our consultant, Dr. Isaac Weisfuse, his, his statement to us that I've taken very much to heart is anything that can be done by Zoom should be done by Zoom. And I think that that's something that I want to take seriously as a premise for how we're approaching the program. And that being said, I know that some of you are in situations where your child does not, it doesn't make sense for them to be on Zoom yet another day of the week, or Zoom is not an effective way for them to be um, engaging in a regular way. And we want to make it work for those children to be on site. So there are a few um, guidelines that are in place in order for us to allow on site learning to occur. Um, first of all, there's the six foot social distancing at all times, which is going to include how we're entering the building, heading into the classrooms, um, exiting the building. Um, we can only have in order to maintain social distance of six feet, about eight kids in a classroom at any one time. The desks need to be facing the front of the room with the teacher at the front of the room. Um, Students and faculty and really everybody who's in the building will need to wear a face mask at all times while they're in the building. That's including the younger kids as well. Um, for entry into the building, there will have to be an adult bringing any student who's attending in person to the building because on the way in, there'll be a screening questionnaire that will need to be completed. Ideally, that questionnaire will already have been completed in advance prior to coming into the school building, um, like on a Sunday morning, first thing in the morning before even coming into the, the building. Um, 
there will be a need for students to already have taken their temperature or to have a temperature check on arrival. And if for whatever reason, a student is not a, in the screening process, the student is not able to join us in school that day, then that's why the adult needs to be doing the drop off because it may be that the child will need to, to leave together with the adult. Um, obviously, they'll be hand sanitizing upon arrival in the building. Um, they'll need to be regular hand washing throughout the day. Um, we are not able to have the kids in multiple groupings during the course of the day. So for kids who come into the building, they will be together with the same group of kids throughout the time that they're in the building. Um, again, that's a class size of no more than eight students. Um, and no shifting to a second group. So students who are on site who want to participate in the tribes program will need to be doing it virtually with a device that the family is sending the child to school with. Um, our expectation is that arrival and dismissal are likely to be staggered times using multiple lobbies. But again, that will depend to some degree on how many people are signing up for the in-person program at any given time. Um, we will have a protocol in place that I don't want to go into too much detail about, about what happens if a child gets sick or over the course of the time that they're in school, or if we learn while a child is in the building that they, they do need to be quarantined. But um, you've probably heard the word isolation room mentioned already in other contexts. That's a kind of doesn't make it sound like the most attractive place to be to me. Um, obviously, our kids are always going to be together with a loving adult to keep in interacting with them, even if they're being separated from the other students that they um, were in class with. Um, we do not yet know if SNAP is going to be happening in school or not, but the likelihood is that it's going to need to be um, brought in from home or small individualized snack portions. Um, and those, those are kind of the, the challenge. And, and let me say there are other challenges. Like we know that music class just can't happen in person. Um, the, the kind of distancing that we need to do in order to allow for music to occur, we don't currently have a structure that enables it on site in the school. Um, now that being said, our hope is that we're going to get kids back into the building or in other ways in person as quickly as possible. That we'll be able to have special programming once we have a better understanding of what the circumstances are in New York City, whether that's coming together for a movie and a discussion or offsite outside of the building programming. But at this point, we are not encouraging families through the synagogue to meet with other religious school families or able to provide staff um, for that at this time. My hope is that that's something that over the course of the coming months, we're, we're going to see some change around. Okay, so if you are not yet registered, um, this is the address, school at emmanuelnyc.org, and we're happy to send you a duplicate registration form or to send you a registration form. And now before we turn to questions, um, I want to turn to Cantor Glasman to share a little bit for those of you who are interested in learning more about how Bar and Bat Mitzvah is working in the current context. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Saul. And uh, thank you, Kara and Josh and all of the people who have been so thoughtful about uh, the religious school. In effect, the religious school and the Bar Mitzvah program is an extension of what we're doing synagogue wide, which is trying to be as uh, thoughtful as possible in this extraordinary time. The latest um, decision on the B'nai Mitzvah program, and I should say all of what I'm about to say is gonna go in a letter to everybody in the next few days. So you'll have this all written down, but here are the highlights. Essentially, we are prepared to do um, in-place services, all of which need to happen in our main sanctuary for uh, up to 25 people. That does not include any clergy or um, temple staff. But in order for those 25 people to come, there are some things which are obvious, like they need to wear masks and um, they need to observe social distancing. But we're asking that those who are from out of state and perhaps from a state that uh, would require quarantining, that if they have not completed that quarantining, that they cannot attend the service. We, while the student is on the BIMA, uh, we are able to also simultaneously Zoom that service. So some of you may have already experienced a Zoom bar bat mitzvah from home. 
it's beautiful. We are now prepared to do that from our main sanctuary as well, up to a maximum of 25 people in the space. But of course, you can have as many as you want on the Zoom call. Um, and Zoom B'nai Mitzvah are really quite beautiful. So it, it's going to be up to the family to choose whether they want to be in the main sanctuary or if they want to do this from home. The training will remain online. Uh, for those who have elected to be in our group B'nai Mitzvah program, they will continue to meet with Cantor Jonathan Commissar. For those who have not and would like to hear more about it, please be in touch and I can let you know. Uh, and some have elected to choose private tutors for whom I'm assuming they are still working with um, virtually. Uh, for those who are in the B'nai Mitzvah program that we have organized, meaning the group tutoring, uh, once their sessions are finished, they will have several sessions with the officiating cantor and, of course, with the officiating rabbi. Uh, we have streamlined our uh, sanctuary sessions to really just one session per student. It'll be an opportunity to read from the Torah, and we've already thought through how to do that safely. Uh, the Torah will be pre-scrolled -scroll, to the right place. There will be a post-it there. So it will really be as much of a touch-free uh, Torah reading as possible. Um, those are the highlights. More details will come in a letter, and certainly you can be in touch with Marnie Serban Turner, who's our B'nai Mitzvah coordinator, or Rabbi Khan, or myself, and we're happy to answer any more questions. Thank you, Cantor. Um, considering the hour, I'm going to um, move us forward, if, if that's okay with you. Okay, so let me, uh, but I hope that maybe you'll be able to come back at the, the end one more time, if, you, if, you, if you're able to stick around, because sure. you know how I feel. Um, okay, so um, let me um, turn it back over to Jackie for a second to um, share a little bit about um, special opportunity for the high holidays. Great. So our teens came up with this idea um, and we would love for your families to participate in this, especially if you feel like you would like to, you know, see other congregants, we would love to see you. Uh, so there are two options of things that you can do um, that will be shared during our hot family and teen high holiday services. You can send a photo of your family holding up your Rosh Hashanah resolution. That's your New Year's resolution. Um, or you can answer some questions. What do you miss about not being at the temple in person? What are you looking forward to in the new year? Or what quality do you want to improve upon personally for the new year? All you need to do is answer those questions or take a photo of your family and email it to school at emmanuelmic.org and we'll, we'll be using it during our high holiday services. And so uh, I think we're going to turn it over to questions. I've only received um, one. So if you have others, please feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, but someone had a question about if students are attending in person and they arrive late, is that an issue? That's an excellent question. Um, I think that the bottom line is that we haven't addressed every single one of those kind of granular questions yet about what on-site learning will look like. But my suspicion is that they will go through the same procedures or protocols that everybody else would upon entering the building and then uh, coming up to the classrooms. I think that it'll be something that we'll be able to address. Um, I also wanna say that if you wish to unmute yourself and ask a question, um, that will be okay too, but um, Jackie will continue to facilitate um, the questions that are coming into the chat box. We, we had another person who just wanted to confirm that 7th and 8th grade is entirely virtual. Correct. The 7th and 8th grade program is going to be done virtually. Um, Rabbi Andy Khan will be leading that program. And we, you know, the 7th grade and 8th grade programs previously were very oriented around volunteer experiences off-site. And clearly that's not an option for the coming year. So we've developed um, a, an approach for 7th and 8th grade that instead of looking at what's the change we can make in the world around us, it's what's the change that we can make in ourselves. And it really lends itself to a virtual program. And 
to taking advantage of the kinds of virtual tools that are available to us in a way that being on site actually becomes a constraint in terms of what we can do. So we've, we've made the judgment that we're going to do seventh and eighth grade online this year. And then our hope is that next year, we'll be able to go back to a volunteering driven program that's entirely offsite. So we have one more question. Um, if more than eight students per grade are interested in being on site, will there be an option for a second classroom to be opened? Yes, eight is the limit per classroom, not the limit in the number of kids that we're going to have in the building. Um, we at this point project that we could have a fair number of students in the building at any one time. Um, of course, the more students that there are in the building, the more challenging entry and exit becomes, but the actual experience of being in the classroom um, is not. Um, let me say that at this point, um, we don't yet know whether the teachers themselves um, for on-site learning, there'll clearly be a teacher in the classroom with the children, but it may also be that some of the work that they're doing will be on a screen in the front of the room and the kids will be interacting with one another with a teacher in the classroom and a teacher on the screen. Um, that's what really we're waiting to see what are the numbers and the ages of the kids that are looking for on-site learning and of course we're hopeful that we will be able to open up on-site learning but it may be that you know October will be we'll, we'll discover that it's not in fact possible and that's not what I'm hoping for but but um, we'll, we'll, we'll be constrained by whatever the reality of, of life in New York City is at that time. So we have a few more questions if we have time for them. Yes, we, we have a few more minutes. We do. Great. So if someone is starting the program for the first time, will we be doing anything new to help orient them like assigning a buddy for the child or a mentor for the parents. So this year is actually a great year to be starting the program because all of the families are going to have a faculty member assigned as their kind of personal Emmanuel docent concierge relationship expert um, who's going to really like they're being hired with one job in mind, which is to make sure that the, the child is having an engaged experience in the congregation is making friends is building relationship is feeling a part of the community and that same person who's hired for that may also be a classroom teacher may also be doing content delivery maybe a hebrew tutor but we have already started this is the first round of hiring that we've been doing are those people who many of whom are 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 members of the faculty who predate my arrival at Temple Emanuel and who just know the families so well and are such an important part of the religious school experience for so many of us. So for, for new families, absolutely. We're going to do everything that we've always done for new families plus more. Um, within the 9.30 to 12 o'clock time, um, can we clarify which hours the students are expected to be on Zoom? And if a family has children in different grades, will they be on the same schedule? Because last year they were not. Uh, it's a great question. Um, so we are rolling out this plan in stages as we finalize the different components of the plan. At this point, our hope is that the technology will make it possible for all of the kids to be on the same Zoom at the same time and it will be consistently the same schedule within that 9.30 to 12 time slot every week. And we'll be able to let everyone know what that looks like in about three or four weeks. I can't tell you yet whether that's all going to come about the way I want it. And I also can't promise that there won't be things that we say we want to do in October that it is January before we're really able to make it work. You know, in a lot of ways, there are things that Zoom now offers for us to do that you couldn't do using Zoom last spring. Um, so we're, 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 there, are, there are ways in which the technology is improving and that's going to give us more options to make things as convenient as possible for families. Great, and our final question um, is about our seventh and eighth grade curriculum. So um, if things open up more, which reading as become more safe, are we able to then take seventh and eighth graders out? Like, will we reevaluate throughout? So let me say that, that that's why we're doing this trimester approach is because I want the opportunity to reevaluate regularly, but I want it not just to be like, I, 
here, I, the language I'd like to use is flexibility with dependability. I want you to be able to say, I know what's in store for the next three months of my child's life. And then when we see in November or in February, things have gotten opened up more, more safely, God willing, then we can reevaluate the program and tell you, okay, now there's the opportunity for you to make a different decision about what you want your child's learning to look like for this next trimester, because we can do it. And that can include more in-person learning, whether on-site or off-site. Nope, there's no one you're gonna meet who's more interested in seeing you folks face-to-face, -face, like seeing you in person than, than I feel. Like I'm the number one person in your life who wants to see you in person. So when we're able to do it, we're gonna make that work. We just don't know yet uh, what, what it looks like to roll that out in a bigger and, and broader way. Um, I know that there may be still other questions that are on people's minds and have not yet been answered. I want to invite you to address them directly to Jackie, to me, um, to Rachel, outside of this context by email. Um, just give us a call. We're really, we're here. Um, but I also want to close our time together by going back to Cantor Glasman, because again, this is something that we, we aren't oh, able to do in person oh, right now. Can and I I'm, question that I'm sorry. Can I just yes. ask a question that Jackie didn't quite understand my, my question um, that I wrote down regarding the seventh and eighth graders? Um, you said it was just going to be about the self, but I know that, that there are lots of other um, things going on around the world in the city that, um, you know, you, you can uh, discuss and, and offer help or, or volunteer time and things like that that um, you don't have to physically attend. Is that something that could be considered? Oh, yes. I don't, I don't want to overstate that like by working on character development and personal growth, that means don't think about the other or don't do any volunteering. In fact, we're expecting the seventh and eighth graders are going to play a crucial role this year in the education of the younger students in the religious school on an occasional basis. Um, so we're absolutely on the same page about that. Um, this is definitely meant to be as I'm looking at the world around me. And this is a year in which a lot of things have come onto the minds of our students that maybe for some of us as grown-ups weren't on our minds when we were children. And, and now we're, we're seeing our kids becoming aware in a very deep way. Um, we're, we're absolute, that's absolutely where, where our heart is at. For, but let me say, not just for seventh and eighth grade, for the whole school, from the pre-kindergartners all the way through the 12th graders and for our college students as well. Um, so now let me turn it over to you, Cantor Glasman, to, to take us out of here in song. It's actually a, a perfect way for us to um, acknowledge a central value in Judaism, which is chesed, that is loving kindness. We all need that. We want our children to display that. We're all thirsting for that. So the song that I'd like for us to sing to close is written by my neighbor, not four doors down, the husband of Neshama Karlbach, Rabbi Menachem Creditor. He wrote this song after 9-11 when his daughter was born, when he had the realization that he wants his daughter in a world of loving kindness, that in order to get there, it's going to require loving kindness from him, from his world, and ultimately from God. So here's the refrain, and you should feel free to sing this at home. The refrain. Yada die, 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 yada da da die. Humor me, try it. Yada die, 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 yada da da die. It'll keep coming back. Olam chesed yibane. Here it is. Yada die, 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 yada da da die. Olam chesed yibane. Yada die, 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 yada da da die. Olam chesed ibane Yada dai 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 yada da da dai Olam chesed ibane Yada dai 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 yada da da dai I will build this world from love Yada dai 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 yada da da dai you will build this world from love. 
And if we build this world from love, then God will build this world from love. Ya lai 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 ya la la lai Olam chesed ibane Ya lai 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 ya la la lai Olam chesed ibane Ya lai 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 ya la la lai Thank you so much, Cantor Glasman. Uh, I want to say a deep thank you to all of you who are joining and joined us for this call. Um, we are going to, in just a second, stop the recording so that um, we have anybody, we have this on, on tape for anybody who you know, wasn't able to join us for the meeting and wants to watch it. Um, so I'm going to officially say thank you to all of you who were here with us in person and also a thank you to all of you who are maybe watching this on the rebroadcast. I invite you to also send your questions to us at school at emmanuelnyc.org.